The general public doesn't understand. They consume with a voracious appetite. Debt climbs on all levels and the suggestion is that this is manageable thanks to ultra low interest rates. The central banks will have to keep them low, they say. They would never want to create a crisis, right? I mean, the very people who specifically created the financial crisis and then literally worked on designing the bills post-crisis would only want to help you out. So nothing to worry about. Yeah. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at what's really going on. That's what this channel's all about. It's not a popularity contest, very clear, because uh, if you look at what's happening to the channel over the time, you will see that, and that's obviously the case. But you came here for the truth, and that's what I want to get to. I want to talk to you about what's happening with real estate, with interest rates, with mortgage rates, with inflation, and everything that you've got to know right now. Look at the markets in Europe on Friday's trading session. I mean, it doesn't even matter that the situation isn't looking good, that there's more lockdowns, that things are, quite frankly, looking like it's going to take a turn for the worse and the stock markets rise up. Italy, which is going into its next lockdown, I don't even know how many this is, what, four, six, who knows, it went up 5% in one day. Why? Because it's a joke. That's what these markets have become. And you look all around the place and you see chaos and you see unfortunate circumstances. And yet, because of the monetary aspect, the fiscal aspect of pumping money in each and every way, the stock markets are going up. You look at those in the investment community, the financial community, and you see what the general consensus is. And that basically summarized right here from JP Morgan, we expect consumers to blow out expectations for the rest of the year given. And you're looking at supposedly everything's going to be totally fine with the health crisis in the next 40 to 70 days. You've got, and this is really important, obviously, $30 trillion of global stimulus record household cash reserves, by the way, thanks to what the governments are doing, giving people paychecks, home equity and stock gains, again, due to the $30 trillion of global stimulus and consumer debt service ratios at a 40 year low. There's also a very clear explanation for that. And you see this altogether, regardless, you look at this altogether and basically all the big financial companies are saying more good stuff to come. But this doesn't take into account many factors that we'll talk about here on the channel and so on. But you just look at how they are always, always, always in a consensus. And that is then put through the media, CNBC and Bloomberg and Reuters and everything else. They bring that out. And then you get the little snippets, those pieces of information that could put out in the mainstream media here and there. And then you'll see that, you know, filtering down throughout all of these so-called called alternative channels. It's all the same information and it's coming from people like JP Morgan, corporations like JP Morgan, who are literally part of the foundation of the Federal Reserve. How in the world do you trust the information coming from a source like this, knowing the way that this system works, as I just described so briefly, but these people don't know, they don't see it. But if you start to dissect and bring this all up into the surface, you're going to realize that. That's why you and I, you're watching this video right now. If this is something that you do on a daily basis, you tune into the Money GPS, you're, you realize what's going on. But the average person doesn't. And they say, just tell me what ticker to buy. I've been told that a hundred, more than a hundred times, thousands of times. Tell me what ticker to buy. And I'm not going to give the financial advice. I mean, it's ridiculous. But let's move on. NFIB survey, the percentage of firms expecting to increase employment. Okay, that's the blue line. Percentage planning to increase employment. And look at the actual increase in employment. That's the orange. What does this tell you? Of course, always, 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 there's an expectation and then there's reality. If you can't see the lines right here, this is zero, okay? And that's 
quite a big difference because uh, a large percentage of them were supposedly going to be hiring. And then you look at what people are actually doing, businesses are actually doing, nothing of the sort. I wanna actually get some numbers around wages. People that had their wages cut, but they remained employed. Are they getting their wage back to where it was previously? Now a year has passed. Now that inflation has eaten away from that, did you get the same salary that you had before? Or did you get the same plus what you would normally get? Like some people get 2% or 3% a year if they're lucky. Other people, did they get their bonus? This would be a perfect excuse. As you see, I've heard from people before, uh, you know what, we couldn't give you a raise this year, couldn't give you a bonus this year either because, you know, the situation. So that's just, you know, you, you should be lucky. You should be grateful that you still have a job. And this is the way for so many people. And you look at what's happened, and I've shown this a million times, and I know you know it yourself. You look at the wages, barely moving, and then you see what is going on with real estate prices and all of the other things. And some of that we'll cover today. This is unsustainable. People are unaware and they're not ready for anything. A little bump in the road. And we have seen that. We have documented that numerous times. GDP, inflation, and rates just broken down there. The expectation is that there will be a huge, huge growth in 2021. We'll see what actually happens. I'm just pointing this out here. Moving on. Inflationary pressures lead to higher rates. So that purple line there, that's a CPI. And then you look at the M2 money stock and you could see what had happened, of course. Look at any form of money, any form, however you want to measure it, it doesn't matter. All of it has gone sky high. And the interest rates, as you see, historically, what has happened if inflation, if inflation goes up, or should I say, historically, when it had risen, the only way that the central bank could make it stop was to increase interest rates. Now, as you could see, they didn't even get to the 2.5% mark previously. This just tells us that they don't have much room to work with and they've promised they've pinky sweared that they're not going to increase rates and they're not even going to think about think about increasing interest rates and they're not even worried about what's happened in the bond market so what does that mean for the potential for inflation I've been showing you what's happening with lumber and that is something that I'm continuing to cover. I talked about this a while ago and I made the joke, of course, buy two by fours, seven two by fours, because this is going to continue to go up. And here we have today, we paid $30,000 for the lumber package in January to build this house. Same lumber pack today is 62,000. In October, it was 18 thousand now that is a big change in such a short period of time you could make any excuse you want it doesn't matter because we start to look all around it's everywhere the hashtag inflation as he points out is everywhere look make an excuse okay it's because of the short supply it's because of the what's happening at the sawmills and the shortage there it's because of the increased demand look around it's everywhere the healthcare the tuition the lumber prices all different commodities you're seeing it in the agricultural commodities just name it the real estate market look at what's happening with the stock market look at what's happening with cryptocurrency look at what's happening with this strange nfts all of this is inflation and why because when you pump the system with funny money you start to see it pop up everywhere it happens everywhere you cannot control it and that's what we're seeing today a devaluation of the currency is simply showing its ugly head interesting article here uh, out of wall street journal and I, I recommend checking it out but i wanted to just touch on a couple points americans extracted more cash from their homes through cash out refinancings in 2020 than any in any year since the financial crisis and that chart just shows you you know that same thing is happening today it is lower than what we saw previously oh don't worry it's so fantastic 
I think it's important to note this. Why? Because the, as the values of these homes go up, people see that as simply cashing in. And so they take it, take the money, and they've been doing all kinds of things. One of those things is to actually renovate their homes. U.S. homeowners cashed out $152 billion in home equity last year. That's a 42% increase from 2019, the most since 2007. So they just mentioned more of the details. The support coming from home equity is unparalleled in helping smooth out the degradations from this current crisis. For those who are in the position to refinance, it's a major source of support get the cash and then start to pay your bills a lot of people are doing that as well simply trying to survive at this point using the increased value of their home in order to make it through maybe they're unemployed maybe they're reduced salary for a period of time maybe they they're currently employed but they weren't for a period so this hurts them and so you know you can see what's happening here with the home values and how that has supported their way of living in order to keep them off the streets. Canada housing might be in a historic bubble. I love how they say might be, but uh, I'll, I'll show you the quotes here. I just think it's interesting to see the way that people are reacting right now in major cities around the world where the prices are going sky high. It actually makes them want to get in. And why? Because that's the fear of missing out. I just heard of one example. A condo, of all things, a condo in downtown Toronto had actually had something ridiculous, 50-something showings or 80-something showings in a period of five days, and there was 13 offers on it. We're talking about a condo in the downtown core. Now, imagine, this is Toronto, imagine what's going on on the, the detached homes, which everybody is after today. The market is completely topsy-turvy, unrealistic, and ridiculous. This might be one of the biggest bubbles of all time. Of course, it's been predicated on where mortgage rates are. There was a mortgage rate, I mean, previously, I haven't checked in a while, in, in Canada, 0.99% from HSBC, if I remember correctly. 0.99%. I mean, it's basically free money. So obviously, people are going to take it and their monthly bills are going to be lower. But you're getting that if a, you know, memory, going from memory here, you're getting that for a five, excuse me, a five-year term, five-year term. Now, what does that do? This five-year term is going to get you that rate of 0.99%, if it, assuming it was a fixed rate. Now, five years from today, where are interest rates going to be? Nobody knows. You would hope it would still be relatively low, but really nobody knows. So imagine you're paying a super low rate, 0.99%. Your monthly bill is $2,000. Oh, I can make that. Not an issue. But if rates go up to 2%, to 3%, to 4%, if interest mortgage rates are at 4%, the mortgage rate are 5%, let's say, historically extremely low. Now, what is that going to do for your monthly payments? Maybe somebody's going to start paying 3000 maybe 4000 and so on. You understand what I'm saying? So this could increase dramatically and put additional pressure on people that they cannot afford, literally can't afford. We have a session, a situation where home prices are up 18% year over year with practically no wage growth, something we talked about a few minutes ago, right? The recent gain caught the attention of policymakers, including the Bank of Canada, which said housing activity has been much stronger than expected. And, you know, instead of trying to increase interest rates just, just a hair, just to kind of give them a warning saying, okay, now, you know, try and cool the market down a bit. Not at all. They kept interest rates at rock bottom. We have an unemployment rate in this country that is higher than it was at the peak of the last two recessions. So we still have a very deep, I would say deflationary hole in the labor market. You can have all of the commodity strength in the world. And if you don't have strength in the labor market, you're not going to get any inflationary impulse. Something to think about. My friends in London, check this out. Living near the office is getting a lot cheaper in London. House prices in the city of London slumped 10.8% in the year through January. And you could just see that, uh, you know, depending on where you look, they're going to show you in this chart right here, uh, drives this particular issue here, drives a wedge between central London and the suburbs. So 
you know, you might be more familiar with these areas here if you're from around this place, but just trying to give you an idea of the house price change in a year to January minus 37% city of Westminster. And then you just go through and see for yourself. Clearly there are major disparities and it's like this in basically every city around, but there are some massive ones in this case. Manhattan renters trading up drive big gain in new leasing. February signings rose 112% in the city's costliest borough. Freebies remain near record levels and renters are taking them. So now is the point at which a lot of these people are just jumping in. They're getting months of free rent. They're getting all kinds of bonuses. And it's not particularly good for the landlords, but they're taking anything they can get at this point. Better to have somebody in there than not have have anybody at all and i think that the general consensus is that summertime would be uh you know a lot of people going back to work so if that's the case they've got a place that's nearby work and so on it's going to be beneficial for them so we'll see how that trend continues as the months go on i talked about green sill in the past few videos mentioned it a couple times but Look at this, another trade finance fund implodes in echoes of Greensill. Uh, Barrack, I don't know how to pronounce this, Barack or Barrack Fund provided loans to borrowers across African nations. 54% of its assets are stuck in illiquid holdings. So there's, there's more to it here. I don't have time to get to it. I'm sure this video is running really long. I just think it's interesting that we're seeing these failures taking place. I don't think at this point, we're, we're going to spiral out of control entirely, at least from, from what we are seeing here. But it just shows you that there are there can be failures in all different types of these financial companies. Look at MF Global, how they took money from segregated accounts. You were aware of that if you were on this channel or you were just researching it for yourself. Look at you know so many instances that have happened over the years. And a lot of these failures, unfortunately, regular people, average people, they get screwed over and that's the unfortunate part. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you're supporting me. I wanna thank you for that. By clicking a button on your screen, you could help me out. Thank you very much. If you wanna learn about e-commerce, you can do so for free at my website, the amazongps.com. You can check it out there. You know, If you wanna learn how to sell stuff, this is the best place to be because you don't have to pay anything. You can just kind of get your feet wet and learn all the way to the intermediate steps. If you wanna know about the financial system, I'm talking about everything, everything, is in these two books. So definitely check them out at the link in the description. Have you seen this video yet? If not, you definitely want to check it out. It's really good, a lot of detail. Click it and I'll see you there.